First of all, thank you all for helping this channel grow. We truly appreciate the support. Making these documentaries isn't easy. We do weeks, sometimes months of research. None of the narrator lines is copied from any website. All the lines were written by us. Thank you. Hope you enjoy. You're watching Dark Clouds, the Mob Deep story. Sit back and relax. Mob Deep is one of the greatest hip hop groups in history. The duo were known for their dark, violent lyrics and rapping over dark, scary beats. Both MCs stood under five foot seven tall. They dominated the hardcore East Coast hip-hop scene in the mid-90s. Mob Deep were making drill music before drill was a genre. They were really living their rap lyrics, and they made the world see the dark side of Queensbridge. This is their story. Albert Johnson, also known as Prodigy, was born on November 2, 1974, in Hempstead, New York, on Long Island. He was born with sickle cell anemia. At an early age, he was forced to take Oxycontin to fight the pain. Prodigy came from a musical family. His father was a famous drummer and his mother was a member of the singing group The Crystals. His grandfather, Bud Johnson, was a famous jazz musician, and his grandmother, Bernice Johnson, was a famous dancer who owned a dance school. His grandmother was very wealthy. She was the family's backbone. Prodigy was born to make music. He started rapping at the age eight. Before picking up a microphone, Prodigy danced at his grandmother's dance school. Prodigy made a lot of friends and even lost his virginity there. Kelwan Muchita, also known as Havoc, was born May 21, 1974 in Brooklyn, New York. Him and his family moved to Queensbridge Projects in the mid-80s. There he met people such as Nas, Capone, the twins Gambino and Scarface, rapper Noy, Cormega, the Intelligent Hoodlum, Marley Marl, MC Shan, and Roxanne Shanti. The projects was filled with MCs. Havoc started rapping at an early age. The Intelligent Hoodlum was Havoc's mentor and even gave him the name Havoc. To prove himself, he had to rap battle the young MCs in Queensbridge. At the time, Havoc was one of the top young MCs in the neighborhood. Prodigy grew up in Lefraxi. His father's heroin addiction separated the family. One time his father even took him along to do a robbery. That was the end of his parents' relationship. His father was forced to go on the run for a few years. Prodigy began rapping and went by the name Lord T. The Golden Child. He signed a deal with Jive Records and landed a feature on the Boys in the Hood soundtrack. Around this time, Prodigy and Havoc had met each other at school. They both attended the High School of Art and Design in Manhattan. Havoc and another guy were planning to rob Prodigy for his jewelry at first. After conversating with Prodigy for a few minutes, they decided not to rob him. They took an immediate liking to Prodigy. Prodigy took a liking to Havoc's style. A 15-year-old Havoc had just won a fight at school. Havoc and Prodigy began rapping for each other. At the time, Havoc was a better rapper than Prodigy was. 
Growing up in Queensbridge gave Havoc the swag he needed to be a successful MC. Prodigy decided to start a rap group consist of himself, Havoc, and a young DJ by the name of Prince A.D. They called themselves the Poetical Prophets. Prodigy's mother became the group's manager. He turned down a record deal with Jive because the label refused to sign Havoc. That made Havoc like Prodigy even more. The two began hanging out every day. This is when Prodigy became a part of Queensbridge. He hung out with Havoc and his friends on the 41st side of Queensbridge. They were known as the 12 Street Crew. Havoc's crew were consist of Rumgotti, his younger brother TJ later known as Killer Black, the twins Jeremel and Jamal, Tinity, Trip, Capone, Yami, Free High, Noid, and Karate Joe. Karate Joe was a martial arts expert and Yami was a golden glove boxer. The crew was always prepared for combat. Havoc and Prodigy began abusing alcohol and pot at an early age. The crew would drink 40 ounces of Old English beers all day and smoke pot rolled in Philly cigars. At the age 15, Prodigy became a stick-up kid. Him and his close friend from Hempstead went on robbing sprees together. Prodigy bought Havoc his first gold chain and took him shopping after doing a successful robbery. The two were now ready to search for a record deal. They changed their name to Mob Deep and Prodigy no longer went by Lord to the Golden Child. A friend of his gave him the name Prodigy. Havoc and Prodigy recorded a demo and began skipping school to stand in front of the Def Jam building. They would eventually meet Q-Tip from the hip-hop group A Tribe Called Quest. Q-Tip get Havoc and Prodigy inside of Def Jam after listening to one of their songs. They set up a meeting with Russell Simmons. Weeks later, Mob Deep returned to Def Jam to meet with Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons couldn't make the meeting, so he sent Liar Cohen to meet with Mob Deep. After listening to a few songs, Cohen decided not to sign Havoc and Prodigy. He said that they were too dark and violent. Before leaving the office, Havoc accidentally shoots an A&R at Def Jam. They panic and run out of the building. As they were running out of the building, rap group Pron DMC were entering. Prodigy and Havoc pushes Run DMC out their way and continue running. Before they could even make it off the block, they were approached by NYPD. Havoc was arrested and charged for the shooting but was later found not guilty. Mob Deep's name began ringing bells in the music industry after the shooting at Def Jam Oftis. Prodigy had to prove himself to other Queensbridge MCs. The twins Jeremel and Jamal took Prodigy around the projects to rap battle every young MC. After battling guys such as Nas and Cormega, Prodigy earned respect as a MC although he lost both rap battles. Nas and Intelligent Hoodlum both told Havoc to be a solo rapper. In 1992, Mob Deep ended a deal with 4th and B-Way Records and began recording their debut album titled Juvenile Hell. Five of the tracks on the album were produced by a 17-year-old Havoc. Prodigy produced two tracks on the album as well. The album also had production from DJ Premier and Large Professor. The singles on the album were hidden from the back and peer pressure. Both singles are now considered classic songs. Juvenile Hell was released on April 13, 1993. The album barely sold 20,000 copies but got three mics in the Source magazine. After getting dropped from 4th and B-Way Records in 93, Mob Deep began working even harder. 
Around this time, Prodigy had invested in studio equipment. He began making beats at his mother's place in Long Island. Havoc liked the whole producing idea and began making beats himself. He basically took over the studio equipment. Prodigy seen that Havoc was taking producing serious. He decided to just let Havoc do all of the producing. While Havoc made beats, Prodigy would go out to get food and alcohol. The two would eventually move the studio equipment to Havoc Mother's place in Queensbridge. Havoc was tired of traveling back and forth from Queensbridge to Long Island. In 1992, the Queensbridge MC known as Nasty Nuts signed a deal with Columbia Records with help of MC Search from the rap group Third Base. On April 19, 1994, Nas released his debut album Illmatic. Nas instantly became the face of Queensbridge. The album is now known as one of the best albums in hip-hop history. Queensbridge was back and stronger than ever. Nas' success only motivated Mob Deep to make better music. They immediately recorded a demo which included the song Shook Ones Part 1. This was a new Mob Deep. Their vocals and lyrics were much better. Around this time, Havoc became a good producer. His beats were dark and hardcore. Havoc helped give birth to a new East Coast sound. Prodigy's flow was now on another level. His cold, violent lyrics matched his voice. Around this time, Prodigy began abusing cocaine. Sometimes he would even smoke it mixed with marijuana. Into the age 15, Prodigy used cocaine. He hid it from havoc and most of his friends in the beginning. At parties, he would sneak off to restrooms to do lines of coke. As a child, Prodigy watched his father use cocaine and he couldn't wait to try it. Around this time, Havoc was allegedly now a full-blown alcoholic. His favorite liquor at the time was E and J Brandy. Him and Prodigy would get drunk in the projects all day and sometimes even pass out on the bench. Sean Puffy Combs, also known as Puff Daddy, was in the beginning of starting Bad Boy Entertainment. Before signing Craig Mack and Notorious Big, Puffy was about to sign Mob Deep. They were gonna be the first artists on Bad Boy, but they were offered a better deal at Loud Records. At the time, the label had just signed the hip-hop group Wu-Tang Clan. Steve Rifkin, the CEO of Loud Records, took a liking to Mob Deep. They recorded their classic sophomore album, The Infamous, in only four months. While working on the album, Havoc's younger brother, Killer Black, had to go on the run from the law. By 1993, Killer Black had allegedly became a well-known shooter in Queensbridge. He even allegedly had a few bodies. While Havoc and Prodigy were focusing on their music career, Killer Black was running the streets. He ran with a guy by the name of Littles. Littles was a big-time drug dealer in the neighborhood. Killer Black was allegedly Littles' muscle. In the beginning of Mob Deep's career, Littles and Killer Black had allegedly paid for photo shoots and studio time for the group. Killer Black was known to be a kind-hearted person. Just like his older brother, Havoc, Killer Black had a drinking problem. He would allegedly get drunk and cause trouble. One late night while Prodigy was taking a cat nap in Havoc's bedroom, gunshots rang through the open window and wakes him up. Minutes later, Killer Black comes staggering in the apartment holding Prodigy's handgun and a set of Walkman speakers. He tells Prodigy to hide the gun. Prodigy placed the gun under a pile of clothes. 
Killer Black explained to Prodigy that he had just killed a guy for a pair Walkman speakers. Later that night, Havoc arrived and the three stayed up all night talking. Days later, Havoc's mother allegedly accidentally take the murder weapon to a church when she was donating clothes. Killer Black went to stay at Prodigy's place in Long Island before going to North Carolina to stay with family. This is when Mob Deep recorded the song Temperature Rising. Shook One's Part 2 was the album's first single. At the time, Shook One's Part 2 was the darkest song played on the radio. Listening to it was something like watching a horror movie. They took hardcore hip-hop to another level. The infamous album was certified gold in only 30 days. It's now one of the greatest hip-hop albums of all time. Mob Deep was now going on turns. They were making money and still hanging out in Queensbridge. Around this time, the East Coast-West Coast War was beginning to take place. After the 95 Source Awards, Snoop Dogg and the Dog Pound came to New York City to shoot their video titled New York, New York. Weeks later, Mob Deep collaborated with Capone and Norega and recorded the single LALA. Tupac was released from prison, signed with Death Row Records. He immediately attacked most of New York City's top MCs, such as Biggie Smalls, Jay-Z, Nas and Mob Deep. Mob Deep were the only ones who fired back. They immediately recorded a Tupac to song titled Drop a Gem on Them. If Tupac wasn't killed, the East Coast West Coast War would have been a lot deadlier. More people would have been killed. Drop a Gem on Them was being played heavy on the radio after Tupac's death. Mob Deep had the song taken off the radio. The world seen that they wasn't afraid of Death Row Records. They became more respected not only in the streets, but in the hip-hop world as well. Killer Black Crun didn't last long. He was arrested in North Carolina and spent almost a year on Rikers Island. Capone told Don Killer Black and even took the stand. He claimed he was present the night Killer Black murdered the guy for his Walkman speakers. Killer Black still ended up beating the murder charge and was released from jail. He came home a Muslim. Him and Prodigy began building and reading books together. Since the infamous album, Mob Deep fans became interested in Killer Black. It was obvious that he was a killer. Killer Black began running the streets again shortly after being released from jail. He ended up getting shot three times defending a friend. One bullet struck him in the back of the head. Killer Black wasn't rushed to the hospital. After getting shot, he ran home and called Prodigy. Prodigy rushed over to Queensbridge and drove Killer to the hospital in Long Island. Killer Black was quickly released from the hospital, but the bullet was still stuck in his head. He began picking at the wound for days, and then the bullet finally came out. Some say that Killer Black wasn't the same after being shot. He began seeing and talking to demonic spirits. People were afraid to even be around him. Killer Black ended up killing himself shortly after. He shot himself in the head at his mother's apartment in Queensbridge. He was 19 years old. Although Prodigy stayed in and out of the hospital, he continued to abuse drugs and alcohol. According to Prodigy, Havoc was now using cocaine as well. They began working on their third album titled Hell on Earth. Hell on Earth was just as dark as the infamous. While working on the album, not only did Mob Deep Plus Killer Black, Prodigy's father died shortly after and less than 24 hours later, when Scarface was killed in a car accident. One day while Prodigy was at the studio taking a nap, 
When Gambino along with Scarface and a few others decided to take Prodigy's Tahoe Jeep to go and pick up some pot. When Gambino was speeding and lost control of the vehicle, the truck flipped over more than 10 times. Another passenger was even decapitated. Mob Deep were heartbroken. When Gambino was arrested and charged with two counts of manslaughter, Prodigy was later arrested as well. On November 19, 1996, Mob Deep released the classic album Hell on Earth. The album had guest appearances from Nas, Big Noid, Raekwon, and Method Man. Hell on Earth was another successful album for the duo. It peaked at number one on U.S. Stop, R&B Hip Hop Albums and number six on the U.S. Billboard 200. Hell on Earth sold over 500,000 copies and was certified gold in months. Mob Deep began working on their first album. They were now making real money. Prodigy and Havoc decided to buy a mansion in Freeport, Long Island. They built a studio in the basement off the house. Prodigy and Havoc let several of their friends move in. The mansion quickly turned into a party house. When Gambino, Ty Nitty, and others didn't follow any of Prodigy's house rules, Prodigy's girlfriend and newborn child lived in the mansion as well. His girlfriend had to watch the guys bring females in and out of the house. Prodigy was no longer abusing drugs and alcohol. He was trying to live a clean, healthy life. Him and Havoc started a record label by the name of the Infamous Records and planned to sign Big Noi, Tiny, Win Gambino, and other rappers in the crew. They began working on a movie by the name of Murder Music. The movie wasn't released until 2004. On August 17, 1999, Mob Deep released their fourth album, Murder Music. Murder Music became the duo's third classic album. It was their most successful album as well. Since its release, the album went certified platinum in only two months. The album first single, Quiet Storm Remix, featuring Lil' Kim, was an instant hit. The song peaked 35 on the Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs Billboard and 17 on the U.S. Hot Rap Songs Billboard. The album's second single, It's Mine, featuring Nas, was another hit. Mob Deep were now huge rap stars. At the time, they were on the same level as rap stars such as Jay-Z, Big Con, Nas, and DMX. Around this time, a huge nightclub by the name of The Tunnel was the place to be on Sunday nights. It was one of the biggest nightclubs in New York City. Rappers, athletes, actors all came to The Tunnel to party. The Tunnel was a dangerous place as well. A lot of fighting and stabbings took place at the nightclub. People were even robbed and kidnapped. Mob Deep were very popular at The Tunnel. They would come to the club with almost 50 people from Queensbridge. Prodigy would even sneak in weapons such as ice picks, razors, screwdrivers, and even guns. Their hit Quiet Storm was one of the most played songs at the tunnel in 1999 and 2000. Mob Deep was on top. While recording the Murder Music album, Havoc and Prodigy began bumping heads. Prodigy didn't like how Havoc and the guys didn't follow his rules at the mansion. Havoc pretty much took over the house. Prodigy and his family had eventually moved out. Him and Havoc were no longer seeing eye to eye. Prodigy began focusing on his solo career and immediately started recording his debut solo album. An up-and-coming producer by the name of The Alchemist produced several songs on the album and Havoc only produced two. 
Prodigy wanted Havoc to produce the whole album, but for some reason, Havoc decided not to. On November 17, 2000, Prodigy released his first solo album titled Date Shin I See. The album peaked at number 18 on the U.S. Billboard 200, two on the U.S. Independent Albums Billboard, and two on the U.S. Top R and B Hip Hop Albums Billboard. The album went gold and received good reviews from critics. Keep It Thorough was the album's first single, and it became Prodigy's first solo hit. Mob Deep began feuding with Jay-Z and Rockefeller Records. Prodigy secretly took a few shots at Jigo in a few songs. Around this time, Jay-Z was feuding with Nas as well. In the summer of 2001, Jay-Z attacked Nas and Mob Deep at the Hot 97 Summer Jam. Jay-Z filled the Jumbotron with photos of a young prodigy at his grandmother's dance class. This made Mob Deep look really bad. It made them look like liars. They temporarily lost most of their fans. On December 11th of that year, Mob Deep released their fifth album titled Infamy. On the album, the duo fired back at Rockefeller, but it just wasn't enough. The album only went gold, but was successful critically. In 2003, Mob Deep left Loud Records and released the mixtape Free Agents. They were signed to Jive Records shortly after and released their sixth studio album America's Nightmare in 2004. The album debuted at number four on the Billboard 200 and sold over 100,000 copies in its first week. The group was dropped from the label Jive shortly after. In 2005, they signed with 50 Cent's G-Unit record label. On May 2, 2006, Mob Deep released their seventh studio album titled Blood Money. The album debuted at number three on the Billboard 200 and went gold. Mob Deep loved being a part of G-Unit. Prodigy even went and got G-Unit tattooed on his hand. 50 Cent took a liking to Prodigy. Prodigy's work ethic was incredible. He was 50 Cent's hardest working artist. The two became good friends. Prodigy always had a thing for guns. His father taught him how to shoot when he was only 12 years old. Prodigy's favorite gun was a 22 automatic. Since the age 13, Prodigy carried around the handgun. October 26, 2006, Prodigy was arrested in New York City and charged with criminal possession of a weapon. He was later sentenced to three and a half years in Mid-State Correctional Facility in Marcy, New York. Prodigy began working out and eating healthy. Into the making of the Hell on Earth album, Prodigy been learning about the Illuminati. He even claimed he seen a UFO outside his bedroom window a few times. While serving time in prison, Prodigy learned more about the Illuminati. He began working on a book titled My Infamous Life. On April 22, 2008, Prodigy released his second solo album, Mate Shin I See Part 2, while serving his time. It peaked 36 on the U.S. Billboard 200 and two on the U.S. Stop Rap albums. Prodigy was released from prison on March 7th of 2011. This was a new Prodigy. He was healthier, stronger, and wiser. In that same year, he released his book titled My Infamous Life, the autobiography of Mob Deep's Prodigy. 
The book received good reviews from critics but made a lot of people angry back in Queens. Prodigy exposed a lot of people in the book and even talked about shootings and murders. On July 3, 2012, Prodigy released his third solo album Mate Shin I See 3 under the infamous records. Havoc didn't produce one track on the album. In that same month, Havoc began dissing Prodigy on Twitter. Havoc said some very harsh things about his childhood friend. He even released a diss track shortly after titled Separated. Prodigy didn't respond to the diss. He made it clear that Mob Deep would eventually reconcile. In 2013, Mob Deep reunited. On April 1, 2014, the group released their final album, The Infamous Mob Deep. The Infamous Mob Deep is a double album that included one CD with new music and one with old and released tracks. The album didn't do too good critically or commercially. Prodigy and Havoc both continued releasing solo projects, but hip-hop fans really wanted an official Mob Deep hardcore album 100% produced by the HVOC. Mob Deep were no longer together. Havoc would go on to work with Kavinsky on his 2013 album Outrun and in 2016. Havoc produced two tracks on Kanye West's album The Life of Pablo. Prodigy continued working as well. On January 20, 2017, Prodigy released his fifth and final album titled Hegelian Dialectic The Book of Revelation under the infamous records. Mob Deep reunited in 2017 and went on the Art of Rap tour along with Onyx, Ice-T, KRS-One, and Ghostface Gilla. While performing in Vegas, Prodigy gets sick and go to the hospital. This wasn't anything new. Like I said earlier, Prodigy would often get sick and visit the hospital due to his sickle cell. Prodigy was admitted to Spring Valley Medical Center. On the morning of June 20th, he was found unresponsive by hospital staff. He allegedly died from accidental choking. Prodigy was 42 years old. Prodigy is one of the greatest stem seas of all time. And Havoc is one of the greatest producers of all time. The duo gave us three classic albums back to back. The infamous Hell on Earth and Murder Music are three of the best hip-hop albums of all time. When you talk about 90s hip-hop, Mob Deep is one of the first names people mention. Even Prodigy's first solo album, Mate Shin I See, is now considered a classic by many hip-hop fans. Well, this was the Mob Deep story. Thank you all for watching. See you next time.